three, two, one, boom! <laughs> and welcome back to Still We Persist. This is episode four, and we have Destiny with us today. What's up? Um, my name is Sienna Kasky. I use she and her pronouns, and I am the Iowa Women of Color Initiative Leadership Liaison. And hello, everyone. My name is Tamara Lash. I use she and her pronouns, and I'm the Iowa Women of Color Graduate Assistant. Today, we'll start ourselves off with a land acknowledgement. Oregon State University in Corvallis, Oregon is located within the traditional homelands of the Mary's River or Ampanefu Band of Kalapuya. Following the Willamette Valley Treaty of 1855, Kalapuya people were forcibly removed to reservations in Western Oregon. Today, living descendants of these people are a part of the Confederate tribes of Grand Ronde Community of Oregon and the Confederate tribes of the Sluts Indians. Thanks for that, Tamara. So Destiny here is a second year undergrad studying sports psychology. Uh, she's from Chicago and Atlanta, and she's a comm rep for a sole LGBTQ plus multicultural support network Boom. and an artist under the name Naughty D. So thanks for being with us today. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. <laughs> Actually, if you could feel the vibes in this room, yeah. we've been chatting a little bit before, and I think this is the calmest I've ever felt like yeah. in filming. That's so I don't know where that's coming from, but also it just feels really warm and nice, so I'm excited yeah. to be sharing space with you today. Yeah. Aw, don't make me blush. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. <laughs> so we're gonna kick off today's episode with the question of what is soul? So, so as previously stated, is a multicultural support network basically for QTPOC on campus. QTPOC stands for queer and trans people of color. So we just want everybody to feel welcome within the Pride Center. It's a pretty white dominated space since we are at a predominantly white institution. So our job is just to put on events and make people, make people like aware of things that are happening within the community outside of like predominantly white mm. narratives and issues. So. And I'm a comm rep there for Pride Center and Soul, but today I'm representing Soul, so that's what we are. Okay. And Soul is for the sun, it's not an acronym, it's just Soul for the sun. Mm. Mm. Warms my heart. So I guess, next question is like, how did you find your way to Soul? How did I find my way to Soul? So, um, like she said, I'm a second year. So my first year I went to the Pride Center and I wasn't that comfortable in the Pride Center because I came in and it was like a white dominated space. And so I truly never went back. Hmm. But then I went on the socials and I saw that soul was even a thing, but I had missed the Lemonade social. And so I was kind of sad about it, but I always had soul like in the back of my mind. So when it came to being able to work on campus, soul was like one of my uh, main choices and so I interviewed and I got the job and um, you know I just trust the science that the universe gives me and I found mm -hmm. my way there and I feel like it's where I was meant to be to work for yeah. You really touched on something that I think is so important that people don't Recognize or like talk about enough is the way in which like POC and like cutie pox feel when they walk into white dominated queer spaces Definitely. and The narrative that tends to be told a lot is around white queerness mm -hmm, um, and if we want to like look even deeper it's like white male queerness mm -hmm. and so then we're like erased from mm -hmm. all of the narratives and we're erased from certain groups on campus or spaces um, and I think like this isn't an isolated thing like what you felt when you walked into the Pride yeah. Center the first day Story is like, of many. yeah mm -hmm. it happens all the time <laughs> um, both like once people leave college and university and are trying to find like queer community in different spaces. Like literally the other day I was talking to someone who like tried to go to a dance group mm -hmm. um, and was like trying to make friends in that space and they just looked at them and were like, yeah, no. Yeah. Um, like as a cutie pop person. It's crazy. I think that many people don't recognize that just because we're all in the LGBTQ plus community, that doesn't mean that racism still doesn't coincide mm -hmm. within it. Mm -hmm. And even during Queer History Month, it's like so many movements were started by QT Pac, but for some reason they're erased from Queer History Month. So with me being a comm rep, I took it into my own initiative to make a whole post dedicating like basically a whole week mm -hmm. just to giving out different historical, historical figures that have played a huge role in our history and to why we have our rights to this very day that are erased and it's it's crazy. For me, I'm working on having a black queer history week I mean, because that's awesome. Wait. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Whoa. 
I mean, you know, I just feel like it's something that has to be done mm -hmm. because with me and my intersectionality of being black, queer, and a woman, there's so many things that get put on the back burner and that are erased. It's like, we have Queer History Month, but we don't really talk about the black queer history. We have a whole Black History Month, but once again, we don't talk about the black queer history. So it's like, it has to be done, you know? You have to be the change that you want to see. Yeah. And so that's what I'm working on. And I think also something that people don't understand is that like music culture was literally created from like black queer folks. Like everything we have that people like nowadays that's like that people art, are dancing to or like house singing music, to. Yeah, all everything that. was created because of black queer folks. I think Pose does a very good way of like touching on that. Mm -hmm. So but that's a whole yeah. other conversation. But yeah, Pose really snapped with that. <laughs> yeah, and I really liked how you pointed out like the white dominated space because I remember like even here, like I called out a white gay man for mm -hmm. like speaking over women of color yeah. at this thing. And he proceeded to like yell at me, saying, "Well, I'm gay," and I'm like, "That doesn't stop saying chill. that I'm queer, so I can't be racist." Like that, part. that doesn't. <laughs> it's like oppression Olympics then just starts, yeah. and you're like, "Whoa!" Like, you're like, "Stop! Let's." Yeah. I'm not. I'm, just, I'm not gonna give you a history lesson because I don't want to give you that labor. Yeah, you don't have to. But it's. I don't know why that is in people's brain. Like, because I have another oppressed identity mm -hmm. that doesn't like absolve you from racism that and part. like microaggressions. And so yeah. I think that's really good that you touched on. And I think Soul's doing that. It's like y'all got some hard work to do, especially being yeah. in the Pride Center. It's like, tough. how does I don't know? How are you dealing with that? Like, what's the vibe like there? It's different. It's um, many times we get the question of like, what is Soul? Like, what's that? And it's. You know, just having to explain it every time, but as soon as you walk in, there's a poster to the left, but it just feels like nobody really sees us. Mm -hmm. Like, I wish that we could be more than just, like, a board on the wall. Like, I wish that our sign outside, outside could say Pride Center and then also mm -hmm. say Seoul. Just feels like as soon as you walk up, all you see is Pride Center. And people aren't even aware that there is a Seoul. Unless mm -hmm. you look at the door and there's some writing, but, like, I want us to be on the sign. I want people to know about us more and um, I'm working hard to get our social media up so more people can feel welcome to come inside but still it's like I don't know I just want us to have more of a presence I want people to know that it's okay to come in yeah. and that there is QT Park on this campus so. yeah how do you think like besides social media like how do you bring people in to your work nowadays I just like come up to people <laughs> I just mm -hmm. come up to them and I'm just like hey like have you ever heard of soul yeah do you know about this like are you queer are you just an ally I normally mm. know by buttons if like because I have my buttons on my back and if somebody's like hey I really like your button I'm like so are you queer like, yeah. you know it's like you soul? it's just yeah. yeah it's hard for people to like gaydars don't always work mm -hmm. so I'm just like how do I let people know that like this is what I am and it's like oh buttons on this back yeah. so yeah it's that's true. um just communicating, not mm. just walking past someone and having my face on the phone and just like mm. doing a smile and a bye. Like mm -hmm. I will actually stop people and just like yeah. talk to them about it. I think that's something that we have to do on campus more. I know it's hard when it's the winter and it's rainy. Nobody really wants to like stop and talk, but right now it's not raining, so stop and talk to someone. Yeah, I like that. And it reminds me of like Audre Lorde's uses of the erotic essay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was hard today. And yeah, when Destiny are in the same class. <laughs> and we, um, we're reading uses of the erotic and how like we need to find that power within ourselves and how to like spread it to other people and like yeah. connecting with others to build better relationships. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that essay really describes soul. Yeah. Almost and like yeah. the work that y'all are doing because of the intersection between race and sexuality and gender identity because oftentimes like our own communities don't accept us for like what it is. Like I remember growing up and being like, oh, you don't like, you don't like other people. Like you like the boys. The boys right. are going to like be there for you, gonna protect you. Or like your dad is gonna have to like hunt down all the was like, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa. Like, all that type of stuff that's yeah. the norm culturally. Yeah. And it's, it's hard because mm -hmm. I feel like as people of color, like we're not allowed to express ourselves in the that way we part. want. I feel like it just stems off of just racism mm -hmm. and segregation. I can definitely say for the black community, it's like you want it so hard to fit in with mm -hmm. the white people. Mm -hmm. So anything different that you did, your parents were like, no, let me groom you mm -hmm. and assimilate you so that you can get these jobs and you can be on the forefront. I, when I was outed, I didn't really come out. The mm -hmm. first thing that my dad said to me on the phone was, are you ready for this lifestyle? Can you mm -hmm. handle this? 
and that really like it was like 12 13 at the time I'm like what life like yeah. life isn't hard what are you yeah. talking about but I always think back to this day to when he asked me like I love you and I respect your decision but do you really think you're ready for this and that's crazy that, like you wouldn't even have to think about that for just choosing who yeah. you love Mm -hmm. So that's a big thing of our parents just wanting to always protect us and nurture us and not want us to give the white society more reasons to like ostracize us and see us as different, but definitely mm -hmm. is beautiful. So mm -hmm. Yeah, I can echo that story. Like the second you were saying that, it popped into my mind. I was talking to my mom and I like had been in an essay for like an article for OSU's um, alumni mm -hmm. and in that I said that I was queer and I like never verbally came out to my dad mm -hmm. because my dad is black and I'm like scared about it because mm -hmm. I just don't know it's different I don't yeah it's real different like I don't know what he will do um, it's like I bring my girlfriend around like he knows like there's no way he doesn't know mm -hmm. but like I have never verbalized that to him um, and I wanted to show him that article so badly mm. and my mom like was just like, I don't know, I don't know, like, what do you think's gonna happen? Like, the same thing, like, are you ready for, like, whatever he's gonna do? Like, yeah. I don't think he'll do anything, but are you ready for that? And, like, even in your, my own family, like, am I ready for what's gonna happen? Yeah. Because yeah. being queer and being POC. And that's still something that I'm like, ooh, I don't know, am I? As I, like, bring my girlfriend around. <laughs> like, she's, like, hanging out. Yeah, everything. we spend Christmas together. But, yeah, yeah like, as I go back home, um, like, to Hawaii, like, and people ask, like, oh, are you dating someone? Do you have a man in your life? I'm like, mm, like Those what? questions. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> like, I have yeah. someone, but I don't think yeah, it's Yeah, I don't think it's who you think that. Who you yeah. think it yeah. is. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's tricky. These... <sighs> I remember I posted on like social media over the summer saying like, yeah, I'm queer, I love my body, I love all this, like I love my whole self. And then I got a text from one of my tias saying, so what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> what do you mean by What this? do you mean? Yeah. Like literally, what do you mean? And I was like, oh, I, I love myself? Like that's what it means. Like yeah. I'm being unapologetically myself and that's what I'm trying to get across. She's like, so you like girls? And I was like, oh, well, I mean like, yes, I, I like, everybody yeah. <laughs> like, and it was it was really difficult because like my family doesn't have that language like what is pansexual what is queer yeah. what is like systems of oppression like yeah they can see it but they don't understand it it's crazy and yeah it's, it's more of just like a hush hush thing yeah like, sienna likes girls and other people that i don't know about like <laughs> it's a generational thing yeah. it's a generational yeah. difference yeah yeah it's always crazy to me to like think back um because most of old deities and all of that, there was no gender. Or mm -hmm. they sexually were with whoever they wanted to. Mm -hmm. But as soon as we became like enslaved and as soon as Christianity and other these foreign religions were pushed upon us, we completely like erased like that different yeah. side. It's just like, no, this is a gender norm, this is this, this is that, this is sexuality. Right. So I think about that a lot. And that's why um, yeah, I don't know. I'm really into it and like studying two spirit and just yeah. everything because it's like this isn't brand new stuff. It isn't. Like this it has isn't. always been here. It's just somehow become a race. Mm -hmm. So it's time to bring it back up, dig it out, look into the history. Yeah. Um, and I yeah. think like I went to the Oregon Students of Color conferences over the weekend, and one of the keynote speakers was talking about like generational trauma, mm -hmm. and like one way to push back on that is to not assimilate into the dominant culture. Mm -hmm. And then I asked the keynote after, and I was like, so like, what are some tools? And then he was kind of just saying like pushing back, and so I took that in myself. I was like sitting there, I was like, how do I push back against mm -hmm. these like colonial concepts that structure our life? And mm -hmm. I like really think that it's like trying to be your whole self. And so, like, I don't know, not explaining to my family about, like, my identities that I hold myself, but, like, not being afraid to share it with them. Yeah, unapologetically. Yeah, but, I mean, like, a lot of people don't have that privilege, yeah. too. Like, that's not... It's not safe for everybody. It's not safe for everyone. Yeah. And so, like, trying to find ways to make it safe for people to be themselves, which I think Soul does. Mm -hmm. And I wish that y'all have more staff members. Yeah, me too. To do this work. We got a lot of stuff to do, a lot of people yeah. to connect to, so I agree. Yeah, so I guess like going off of that, like what's your vision for Cutie Pop folks at OSU? <sighs> My vision, I don't know. I dream very big. Um, I just want everybody to feel like they have a space. I want us to be able to connect with the APCC. I want us to be able to go in these different cultural centers and not even feel like a second thought of saying like, Yes, I work within the Pride Center, like, because as soon as you say that and 
spaces of color, you see like people cringe mm -hmm. when you're open about your sexuality. You see people feel uncomfortable when you have to introduce yourself with your pronouns. Mm. I feel the discomfort in the room. Um, and so I just want to break that. I want us to just be like, you know, this is what it is, like respect me, or like get out, basically. My vision for people at OSU is to feel like they have a place and that they are able to belong and coexist in peace without having to have that much fear. I feel like everybody is coming to college to have this, uh, this new experience and everybody wants to be quote unquote woke and just like really evolve. But how can you when you're still being boxed in? Mm. And so I just wanna break the box. That's, that's my vision of a lot of plans that keep on the hush, but that's like the broad spectrum of what cool. I wanna do. Damn. Thank you so much. <laughs> Do you have any, like, beyond, I don't know, I feel like I just need to, like, soak that in mm -hmm. and just, like, absorb it. Yeah. But are there any other, like, last words you want to share with the AYA community, or? I, don't, I just really appreciate you all for coming. I know I have a treat. I have a little wrap for you all. Um, but, yeah, I appreciate you all for just awesome. having me in this space. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Yeah, so... Yeah, we do have a treat for you. Um, Naughty D is gonna perform <laughs> a rap for us. So this is literally like from the book, still working on a flow, so if I mess up, please forgive me. All right. If them red dots was to hear, you a snitch. They had their fingers ready, they was tasting licks. Bush's three stock lost, you never been legit. He wanted blacks and browns to fill that can. Ain't that some shit? Now you won't Kamala Harris to be president? Just cause they skin folk, they ain't kin folk. Jay-Z proving that he ain't woke. I wanna respect what he doing, but it's hard when money to influence. His pastor with his preach ain't incongruent. I pray he break away from the NFL cause this is foolish. Hmm. Now these aren't the only problems in the community. Black trans women fighting for their life every night for us to just sit in silence that ain't right. If you ain't for all, then you stand for none. So stop saying Black Lives Matter, hun, because do you really mean that? Will you set the homophobia aside for those that are black, or will you continue attack? Your brothers and sisters was raised. That was taught by a book to keep us enslaved. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, forgive the flow, forgive my mistakes, but I had chills. Yeah. I did too. I was like, <laughs> Thank you for sharing that Yeah, with us. definitely. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. So, um, if you aren't aware of what the Red Dogs were, they're basically a, a task force in Atlanta that came through um, during that era of the cocaine being introduced mm -hmm. to the hoods. And so they literally, yeah, fill prisons with black and brown people. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wrote this. And Jay-Z made me mad, mm -hmm. and so that's why. I, I know, I was like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, damn. Yeah. Well, thank you so much thank for you. coming in and chatting with us today. Um, that concludes our episode for this week. Um, to stay connected with us, uh, follow us on Aya underscore OSU. Um, do you want to put in your Yeah, app? my Instagram is LordXD, L-O-R-D-X-D-E-E. -E. Um, yeah, an EP on the way, Naughty D. Hey, <laughs> perfect. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. You. Bye.